Welcome to Beside the Burn for Thursday the 3rd of February. We're continuing through Daniel chapter 3 and today verses 19 to 23. And there is very little hope offered to us in these verses today because we're going to find that the three friends are being thrown into the furnace. And by the end of verse 23 that we get to today, that's all we know. They've been thrown in and it appears as if they are going to die. And we'll have to come back tomorrow and read the end of the chapter to find the hope that we have here. So let's read together from verse 19 to verse 23 and find out more about Nebuchadnezzar and the punishment that he is offering here. And we need to see that in a way, this is a little bit like what we have with the the knowledge that God is, that Jesus Christ is coming back to judge us. And we know that he's coming in judgment and we have a decision to make as to whether we're going to obey Jesus or disobey him. And therefore, at the end of it, we will either be punished or we will live in paradise with him. And Nebuchadnezzar is doing a similar thing here. He's declaring, look, you either obey me or you don't. If you don't obey me, then you're going to burn in the fire. If you do obey me, then you're going to live and, and you'll have a, a great life with me. So there's a little bit of that, although it's the opposite way round, uh, but you understand what I mean. So let's begin with verse 19. And what we find at the very start of verse 19 is that Nebuchadnezzar, who was furious in the passage yesterday, is again furious in the passage today. He has not calmed down any. The um, statements that the three friends made to him have not helped him in the slightest. They've made him worse. And remember in chapter 1, we saw how Daniel and his friends didn't want to eat the meat or drink the wine, and they were able to come up with solutions and offer them uh, to uh, the, the um, chief official, and he showed favour to them and accepted their propositions. Here, there, there's none of that. These three friends have drawn the line and said, this is not what we want to do, and Nebuchadnezzar is filled with fury. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. And the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. So here we have Nebuchadnezzar and his fury drives him to try and think up a greater punishment for these three friends. And he decides to heat the furnace by seven times. And th that's not exactly the, the best method. If he had sat down and thought about it, heating the furnace only makes things easier for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego because as we see in, in a moment from those who are carrying them to the furnace, because of the heat, they die immediately. And therefore, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego should have died on the way to the furnace. They would never have got into the furnace. Such was the heat. So therefore, they would have been killed immediately and their death would have been devoid of, of a long, agonising pain. If he'd kept the temperature down, they would have been thrown into the furnace and they would have suffered much more. And that surely is what... And Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to suffer, but he decides to heat it seven times. So verse 20, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And that idea of them being bound before they go in is interesting as well, because as we'll see tomorrow, their binding is no longer holding them. And instead of them just lying there unable to move, they are actually able to move about. But they are bound before they go in. Then verses 21 and 22. Then these men were bound in their cloaks and tunics, their hats and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace. 
So they were fully clothed whenever they went in. Their clothing would easily have caught fire. So there was plenty there for them and to be caught up in the flames and for them to be destroyed immediately. This makes it more difficult for them to survive, but it also ensures that they maintain their dignity. They're, they're clothed. And whenever they come out of the furnace, they are still clothed. So God not only protects them physically, but he protects their dignity, he protects them emotionally as well. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So there we have it. These three friends should have been killed along with the soldiers who were taking them in. And it should have lessened the time that they would have suffered. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, fell bound into the burning fiery furnace. Now that's where we're going to leave the story today. But um, as we also would note here in this furnace, that the fall into the furnace would have been enough to knock them out. It would have been enough uh, to start to hurt them. And then the fire would have come and destroyed their bodies. But that doesn't happen. They are thrown in, but God protects them in every way here. He protects them in the way that the soldiers are not protected. And God watches over them. It looks as though... God may not do it, because here they are. You would have thought that God would have stepped in before they ever got near the furnace, that God would have um, put out the flames, that God would have changed Nebuchadnezzar's heart, that there would have been some argument that would have been put to him that he would turn round. But no, they are put into the fire. And our God is able to protect them. In a couple of chapters time, we're going to find Daniel put into the lion's den. And you expect in that situation that there is a little moment before the lions will attack. And therefore, if Daniel is put in, then there's that moment that allows God to, to stop the lions and protect Daniel. But here, there is no moment. They are thrown into the midst of the furnace, into the fire, and the instant that we would be thrown in there would be the instant that we would die and be burnt. But that doesn't happen. God is greater and God is able to protect them. So let's bow in prayer and let's turn to God. Lord God Almighty, we thank you today once again for the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And we thank you, Lord, for the way that you are able to protect them, protect them from flames and heat that killed the soldiers on their way to the furnace. And Lord, we praise you that you are almighty. But Lord, we praise you for the faith of these three friends, that even though they were not sure that you would protect them, they still obeyed you and trusted in you. Even though they had no idea what the outcome would be, they were still prepared to put their faith and trust in you. Lord, forgive us whenever we have doubted you. Forgive us, Lord, whenever we have put our faith elsewhere. And help us today, Lord, to trust you completely. Lord, you've given us commands. Help us to obey them without question because we know that you have our best interests at heart. Help us, Lord, to accept whatever comes our way in life because we recognise that it is your will and your will is perfect. And help us, Lord, to look forward to your coming again, that we would not lose sight of the fact that you are returning, that this world is not our home, and that you are coming back to claim us. And Lord, in the meantime then, help us to continue to obey your commands and not to doubt. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.